Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I am Penge and welcome back to Skyhaven, where last time out we tried to revolutionise our little airfield here via the use of the exciting new technology of tarmac, but unfortunately things did not go entirely according to plan, I think it's safe to say. So the plan was to remove everything grass and replace it with everything tarmac. So get rid of the grass runway and the grass taxiways and the old grass ramps and replace them with their far superior tarmac equivalents, because why wouldn't you want to have lovely tarmac everywhere? tarmac it's very in it's very hot right now is tarmac so we saved up quite a bit of money and we waited until the end of the day when there were going to be no flights coming in and going out and all that kind of stuff and then we began the great replacement project so everything that was grass got removed we removed pretty much everything kind of from this point onwards from this line and this road onwards all the things were removed all the grass taxiways and ramps and the runway that was all removed and then we started putting in the tarmac equivalents but unfortunately it very quickly became apparent that we were going to run out of money even though we'd saved up some money we were not going to have enough to kind of replicate what we had because tarmac is expensive turns out the tarmac is actually quite costly compared to you know a grass road and a grass ramp and all that kind of stuff because you know tarmac has materials you need materials to you know create the tarmac and lay it and machines to make it flat and all that kind of stuff so yes we very quickly ran out of money it was not a brilliant moment some slight you know financial miscalculations from me so i think we got the runway in we got some taxiways in and i think maybe we had a couple of ramps and that was it. And two ramps are not enough to keep this place going. They were just not enough to bring in the money to keep everything ticking over. So we had to go to the bank. We went to the bank cap in hand and said, hello bank people, can we please have some money? Because I've made a terrible, terrible financial error and now we have no cash at all. So they gave us some money and now we have this. So we've got the four ramps in extra here. So these two are for scheduled flights. These are for, you know, just anybody that needs to come by and pick up cargo and refuel and all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, I mean, you can see how how badly it went because you've got lovely tarmac all oh, looks very professional and then it just sort of stops here and then you go back to this fairly feeble looking little sort of dirt track all the way back up to there where you join the fancy tarmac runway so yes it did not go entirely according to plan but we're still here we're still here we're still functioning we haven't gone bust and we've got 911 dollars right now it's currently seven o'clock in the morning and it's 1927 so what we did was as well we've got ourselves some more scheduled flights coming in we signed another contract with whatever they're called royal aviation airlines what are they called hang on now we need to go and find out what they're called the Royal Aviation Company. We signed another contract with them. So now we've got quite a lot of their flights coming in, which is very good because I mean they pay $720 each time one of them comes in and you know, gets services and then leaves again. So that's quite a nice amount of money coming in. That's very nice indeed. So that's why these two ramps are reserved for them. So let's just get time ticking on. Let's get time moving on. And we should see those ones coming in fairly soon, I think, because they were due to land, or one of them is due to land at seven o'clock. Yeah, so one is imminent. One should be coming in. And in fact, there it is. Hello, Royal Aviation Company RD161. Thank you for the landing fee. Right, so you're going to pull up on number one. Okay, I was thinking you might have come in on number two, because number one, I don't think has anything scheduled. Number one has nothing booked right now. It's going on there. Yeah, you. I'm expecting you in. Well, who are you? Why are you here? Okay, not entirely sure why you're here. Um, fuel is looking a little bit low. We could do with some other flights coming in, please. Primarily cargo flights. That'd be quite nice. We're going to have to go and get some more fuel. We're going to need to go and get some more fuel. Hang on a second. Let's go get more fuel. New contract. What have we got? 999. Hang on. What can we afford? 2,000 units of fuel for $840. We're going to have to. We're going to have to do that because we can't get any more. That'll, that'll do. That'll do. We've got some fuel on the way. And here is... This flight, they want some fuel and some cargo. Ah, that one there wants purely 12 bits of cargo. Yes, you're, do you know what? You're all welcome. You're All of you come in. It's all fine. You're paying us lots of money. We can replace the fuel that they're going to use up. That's all good. There's one space left. So I would like to, hang on, hang on. What's that mean? PAX boarding, no facility has been found. What does that mean? What is PAX boarding? I've seen that before somewhere, PAX boarding. It's something to do with these. It's something to do with the scheduled flights. Packs boarding. Is it to do with passengers? It might be something to do with passengers. Hang on. Boarding is boarding is blocked. Why is that blocked? Oh, there's all oh, there's terrible things all over the place. What's that? In case the vehicle got stuck due to deadlock, you can finish the current movement action and the vehicle will jump to the destination point. Don't really know what that means, but okay. Um yeah. Is there a problem with Yeah, these passengers are coming off. Oh maybe. Ah, okay, hang on. Have we got passengers on this plane? but they can't disembark. They can't get off the plane. 
Oh, because we haven't got enough vehicles over here. Yes, we need some more vehicles over here because, of course, yes, our flights are landing at the same time. Now, somebody <laughs> somebody did point this out and they said, hang on a minute, your flights are kind of overlapping. You know, they're not overlapping. They're, they're scheduled at exactly the same times. So this is going to cause some problems. You might end up with <laughs> confusion and delay, which is, you know, what, what Sir Topham Hat would say. So I think this is going to cause a bit of an issue. We need to get some more vehicles over here. The only thing is, we only have $159 right now. So yeah, I think maybe we have not got enough vehicles to carry the passengers from the terminal and their luggage over to the um, over to the planes. Okay, right. That's that's not great, is it? Right. We need some more money to come in. It's fine. We'll work on this. It's okay. We're getting better at this kind of thing. They need 700 fuel, but they're going to pay 555 for that. You come in. You absolutely come in and have that. Can we just have people that just want cargo? We've got loads of that. Got absolutely loads of cargo. Can you please come in and just take all of the cargo? Because we have much of that. Right, and also, I'd like to get some more ramps in as well. I'd like to get some more ramps in. Right, hang on. Let's just, you want 700. You're willing to pay a lot of money. Ah, you just want cargo. Now, hang on a minute. Flight RD161 is late. Oh, crikey. Hang on a second. <laughs> right. Okay, we're probably going to get a penalty for that. But we do have 1,894 monies. Okay. Yep, right. Okay, so we're struggling with this. Um, you want, yeah, you can come in and have loads of fuel. But... We can then go forth and buy some more. Oh, no, hang on. No, don't buy fuel right now. Don't buy fuel right now. Oh, yeah, that one's late. That plane has been delayed. I mean, welcome to the modern world. Plane delays are completely ordinary now. We need to get more of these vehicles in. So here we go. Let's get ourselves a new DMG-10. So that's for... Hang on. What was that for? That was for... Uh, can we go back? I want to go back. How do we, how do we come out of that? That is for... The baggage handling? Yeah, that's the baggage gate. So yeah, we're going to need another one of those. And we're going to need another passenger one as well. Okay, that's fine. Right, so what do we want to do? Five, 590, they're so expensive. Why can't we afford it? Not enough parking space. Oh, no, we can afford it. There's just, there's not enough parking spaces. Oh, crikeys. Okay, let's spend $440 on getting a parking slot upgrade. And then buy one of those for 590. Oh, the expense. <laughs> the expense is mounting in everything. And then baggage is going to need the same kind of thing. That's also 440. Are we going to have enough money? 350. Only just. Only just. Okay, but now we've got two of those vehicles. So two vehicles to move people around the place and move their luggage as well. Okay, right. Quite happy with that. Hopefully this thing can get out of the way very soon. Yeah. There's nobody to board. There's no workers. But hopefully now that will be sorted with our double sort of vehicle sort of uh, assignment over here. Oh, this is interesting just here. This plane here seems to require 525 units of fuel, but also I think it's dropping off 12 passengers. So I think Paxes means people or, you know, passengers or whatever. Maybe it's a translation thing that's not quite come through. Early access and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's interesting. That's very interesting. That's dropping off a number of people. Right, we have no fuel. And we don't really have any money to buy any fuel. Right, you need to come in. You guys need to come in right now. That's going to be helpful. And everyone else is going to have to wait a little bit. Right, hang on, hang on. Can we get Can we get any more fuel coming in? Can we get... What can we get? We can get 420. We can get a, a small amount of fuel in. There we go. Right, sign that. Thank you very much. And then, yeah, bring in you. Because you need a bit of fuel, but also you bring in $719. Okay, yeah, we'll absolutely have you guys as well. Yeah, this is not going entirely according to plan. It's not going very smoothly at all. Has this one gone wrong? Has this actually gone wrong? Because it says no workers. I'm very confused as to what this is doing here. And I assume now it's 10 o'clock. Is that making our next flight late? Yeah, RD141. What, what? Why are these not... Those ones at the top are leaving, and these ones here are not... They're not leaving. Which flight is this? What flight are you? You are RD161. Where is RD161? Uh, it must be just there. Okay. Why haven't you left yet, then? I'm confused as to what this is doing. Boarding. There is a boarding problem, but I don't know what... What if we press this button? What if we just press that and see what happens? Uh, that did nothing. Do we abort this airliner? Do we just abort this and make it go away? Not entirely sure what's happening here. Oh, now we have entirely no money. Let I think this might, this might have... Has this glitched? Because I, there should be people bringing stuff this way to this. 
Maybe this has gone wrong. Maybe this has kind of glitched out and it's gone wrong. We'll abort that airliner. Boarding has failed. Clear off. We'll pay a fee. It's all fine. Yeah, we probably got told off for that. But never mind. Never mind. Right. That's cleared everything out. Now people can come in and start landing again. This is all good. This is all good. Penalties. We took some penalties. Okay, that's fine. We can cope with that. What exactly are we researching? Bus driver training. What does that give us again? Oh, passenger boarding boost. Okay, maybe we do want to start looking at some of those things. Right, hang on a minute. Hang on. You've got 12 cargo. You can come in. Give us all your money, please. Um, we can get some other people coming in. We can get some other flights in. Hello? Anybody? Because we're running out of money again. <laughs> the money is, is not coming in quite as quickly as I was hoping it would do. Okay, right. They're coming in onto that ramp. Right, yeah, the passenger's being loaded on. The passengers are being loaded on just there. So that's fine. And it looks like that is also... What's that flight doing? Yeah, that's also waiting for passenger stuff. Ah, right. Okay, we've done the research for that. So are we now up to date with everything according to where the line is? So yes, yeah, so passenger services, aero snacks. Oh yes, oh yeah, we want to get those things in. That's going to be exciting. Um, construction, yeah, we're quite far ahead in terms of construction. Office works, yeah, we're not doing so well in office works. We're not doing so well here. How about we get? Um, I mean, these are just boosts. These are just boosts for things. I'm not so bothered about getting all these boosts because we don't really use them. We haven't got the money to use any boosts right now. Um, what does that do? What's pump fueling? Hand pump station, big barrel fuel storage. So that's just better refueling. And that's a big service hanger. So I suppose we could get rid of our little service thing and put in this big one, uh, which might be better, possibly. Passenger services, an advanced terminal. That might be quite nice. That might be quite nice indeed. How about we get ourselves a jet era terminal? I mean, that's a little bit ahead. Uh, oh, stairway mounting. <gasps> yes. Okay, that sounds very exciting. Yeah, can we have one of those? Yeah, we'll have one of those, please. 10 hours, that will be done by the end of the day. Okay, that's quite exciting. Okay, right, looking forward to that. That's good. Okay, both of these flights are now late because they did not get the required services on time. Okay, why, why are you late? What exactly are you waiting for? You're waiting for passengers and fuel. Ah, the fuel. Yes. We might possibly have a bit of a problem here because we have entirely no money and we have entirely no fuel. Um, I mean, is there anything we can do about this particular situation? I don't know if there is. I don't know if there's anything we can do. I mean, can we take out another loan? We must be able to take out another loan. Okay, this will all be fine. Right, we'll take out the maximum because why wouldn't we want to do that? And we'll pay it back over a longer amount of time because it makes no sense. The interest doesn't go up the longer we sort of you want to pay it back over or whatever. So we'll take out another loan. Oh, I wanted to pay off the one loan and now we're about to take out another loan. <laughs> and then let's just get in as much fuel as we can take. 6,000 lovely units of fuel. Yes, please, for 2,520. And now we just need to get everything moving. We need to get everything in. Lots of flights kind of coming in. I mean, we've not had many of these flights. Look, we've not had many of the flights that just come in and drop by. They've been very, very quiet, really. So, I mean, that's not helping with our money. That's not helping at all. These flights are horribly late. Come on, little fuel delivery truck. Where are you? Deliver us the lovely, lovely fuel. Hang on. Let's put it on a bit quick. I think... Oh, I was hoping that was it. I don't think it is. Where is it? No, not there. We need the fuel. We really desperately need that fuel now. Is that you? Are you the saviour? Yes, I think you might well be the saviour of our airfield. There we go. Right, everyone get out. Everyone get out and put fuel into these planes because now the next ones can't leave either. Right, 719. Yes, you can come in. You can also come in. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody just, just come in. Come in and give us all the lovely money. So now this plane should get their boarding. So passengers are getting on board. This is all very encouraging. Okay, you should be ready to leave momentarily. They're just boarding the last few people, are they? Right, that's bringing lots of money. I know that's a lot of fuel they want, but we've got an all right amount of fuel right now. Okay, right, they've finally gone. They've finally gone. Right, splendid. So, some money is coming back in. This is all very encouraging. Now, that one there did need, um, that needs a little bit of fuel. All the things are full, however, which is encouraging. That's good. We're paying a little bit in penalties. That's not very good, is it? Um, you want a little tiny bit of fuel. You can have that bit. You can have that bit. Um... So that brings them in. We need to get some more fuel by the look of it. But look at that. We're up to 8,200 already, which is great. You can come in because you just want cargo. 
which is very helpful, which means we don't have to worry too much. Um, yes, all right. All the all the all the flights are late. It's all good. Yes, all right. <laughs> fine. They're all late. It's fine. It's fine. Get used to it. I mean, that's how it works in the modern world. Right. So there we go. New contract. Get ourselves. If we could wait until that fuel goes down below 2k, then we could just get another 6,000 units in. And then, yes, that will get us back up towards sort of 8,000. And that should keep us going for a good, good long time. And I think we're going to go below. There we go. Right. Sign that. Get us a load of extra stuff. Um, you want to get rid of some cargo. You just want some fuel. Yep, absolutely. In you come. It looks like those flights are now moving a bit quicker. These ones are now coming in and are going out slightly more effectively. We need to stagger their times a little bit. We need to stagger their times ever so slightly just to just to kind of offset the the burden on everything here. Um, yes, you can come in and you can come in, give us all the stuff. And we've got 6.7k units of fuel, which is wonderful to behold. And the money is now coming in quite nicely, apart from that bit, which then just depleted all of our money. But apart from that bit, look at that. That's a huge chunk of cash coming in. That's very welcome indeed. Okay, so yeah, we still need to get rid of loads of cargo. We're going to have loads of cargo spare. Look at that. It's going to be loads of cargo. We get 140 units of it delivered. Yes, you absolutely come in. Take some of our cargo away. You, yeah, have some fuel. Yes, okay, fine. Everything was late. We're sort of used to it. You didn't get the things on time. What are you waiting for? Passengers. Okay, and now it's gone to night time. Okay, not our finest day. I'll be honest. We've, we've paid out some money in penalties. We'll have a look at the end of the day and just see what the impact is of those penalties. How much money have we actually sort of you know, wasted on that kind of stuff? However, this is being loaded up with lovely cargo and we get a little bit of money for that too. Okay, so you're going to fly away and that's it for the day. That is it. Let's not replace this strip of, of sort of uh, dirt taxiway with proper tarmac stuff because... I think that might possibly cause us some financial problems. So let's just move time on. I think the next thing will be this research getting done. So that'll be done. There we go. Stairway mounting is done. What do we want to get next? Willie's dispatch attractor. Okay. As the choice of major airlines throughout the world to adapt the, to the standard Jeep for ground support operations continues to boom. That's a very big, complicated sentence. You can use it as a dispatch attractor for all your luggage transporting needs. It's a new approach toward luggage and cargo carried by powerful tugs and dollies instead of regular trucks. Oh, it's like a little, little sort of carriage at the back. Yeah, we'll get one of those then, please. We'll have one of those. Seeing as we're doing stuff with, you know, passengers, what have you. And then, yeah, did we not get a passenger boost? Did we not get a passenger boost at some point in here? Because it said we unlock passenger boost, but how do we deploy the passenger boost? Again, this is one of the things where I don't fully understand how this game sort of functions with regard to that. There is a bit where we had... We, was it in here? Where was it? Oh, no, maybe we haven't got it yet. No, it was the thing that we hadn't got. Where was... There was something that gave us a passenger boost. Oh, no. This. Bus driver training. Passenger boarding boost. But how do we... How do we deploy this? How do we make this work? Because that's one of the problems we've had with getting passengers boarded and onto planes and all that kind of stuff. So how do we boost this exactly? Where is this button? Now here I can see that we're boosting the fuel management. So we're using our fancy new fuel pumps or whatever. And in here, we're using our fancy sort of uh, cargo winch things in the cargo building. And they're boosted. So both those boosts are on. And that's fine because they've got their own buttons for that kind of thing. But I cannot see where the boarding boost would be. I just don't know where that is. Oh, but we can buy stairways for particular ramps. So this ramp here, where we have flights coming in and out with passengers, we could buy a portable stairway. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, it lives on the side. Look, it just lives just there. Okay, we'll do the same for this one as well, because that makes sense. However, it's not entirely happy about that. Oh, it's going a bit weird. Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So we'll spend a little bit of money on that because that makes perfect sense. Still can't see how we boost this. Still not sure how we boost any of this stuff. But do you know what? At least we've got little sort of lovely portable stairs in place. Hurrah for those. I think it's worth checking our scheduled flights as well. So what is going on? On ramp number two, we've got these five scheduled flights coming in for the next four days. But then on ramp number one, we've not got much going on at all. I do want to go and get ourselves a very, very brief contract. Just something very small with the... No, that's not the right button. That one there. With these guys. Do we want to go and get something quite quick? So just a few flights coming in. Yeah, that one would be ideal. But we've already done that one, unfortunately. Um, that says break. Haven't we already done that one? That one's already been... 
we've kind of met the requirements of that contract. We've sorted that one out. Um, these ones here, though, require extra stuff. These ones here all require extra bits and bobs, and we can't sign that one for some reason. Number of flights, 10. Oh, it's just because we can't cope with 10 flights coming in in one day because we do not have the space. Oh, that would be why. Yeah, I think if we were to take on these extra ones, that's going to cause us a bit of a problem because they need loads of extra stuff. We're struggling enough as it is with some of these things. So how about we just leave that as it is? Let's move them around on the, um, let's move them around on the, on the ramps for something to do. Um, do you know what? I mean, we could just leave it. We could put you there. We'll arrive the following day. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's kind of what we want. You can go there. You can go up onto that ramp at the end of the day. There we go. That sort of spreads them out a little bit across the two ramps. Gives both ramps something to do. I'll accept the changes, yes. Still can't figure out how to do the passenger boost, though. No idea where that is. Just taking a look at our daily report that popped up, we did spend $62 on penalties, which is a lot less than I thought it was going to be, given we had quite a lot of late flights and we even binned one off and said, no, go away. That's actually not too bad. That's not too bad at all. So, OK, that's all right. However, the income was not very good at all. The income was only 13 grand. And we spent quite a lot more than that, of course. We spent 19 grand. So that's why we had to take out the loan. That's not brilliant. But OK, OK, didn't go entirely according to plan. But yeah, you know, the next day, we're going to be fine. We're going to be really good tomorrow. It's going to be a wonderful day. Lots of money is going to come in. And hopefully we can save up enough money to pay off one of our loans. Because, of course, we're paying out loads of money on loans every day as well now. So let's see if we can actually get that kind of thing sorted. And then I'm going to keep searching for the um, for the passenger boarding boost. I do not know where it is. I don't know how to find it. But if I click enough buttons, I'm hoping that I will be inspired and see something somewhere. OK, so another day has rolled round, which is good. We'll get you in because you're actually going to take quite a lot of cargo off of our hands, which is very nice. Welcome aboard. But I have no idea how to get the passenger boarding boost set up. I mean, I think it should be in here. It would make sense for it to be in here, but I can't find anything that looks like a boost button or whatever. So I'm not entirely sure where that is, which is a bit unfortunate because, yes, that's where we've been having a few problems and it would be quite handy to have that thing switched on. But I just do not know how. And we've researched the dispatcher tractor with the obscure name. Yay! Okay, right, good stuff. So now what do we want to go for? What should we go for now? And when we're getting toward personnel rest facilities, the line is kind of going over that way. What does that do? A luggage transfer boost. Again, I don't know where to deploy these things. I'm not sure where they are. That's a fueling boost, a super quick fueling boost. But again, we're all right with kind of fueling. It's getting passengers moving that is our problem. Or should we go and do some of these office works things? Because I don't think they're going to take that long. No, we can get some of these done. We can get some of these done during a day. So yeah, let's have a workflow boost. Which again, I'm not sure how that works. Is that a research boost? Is that a research boost? Should we have got one of those already? I'm not entirely sure. But okay, there we go. We've got quite a lot of flights coming in now. Quite a lot of these coming in. When is our first scheduled flight coming in? It's not. Hang on. Hang on. What happened to all the scheduled flights that we had? There were many of them. And now they're, they've gone? Hang on. What happened there? We had, we moved, we set those flights. Okay. We have no contracted flights coming in. Right. That, that's unexpected. I'll be completely honest. I like those guys because they need a lot of uh, cargo stuff being loaded on and nothing much else. What's happened to all of those then? Because I'm pretty confident that we moved them around and there was going to be four of each one. Unless the company have been really disappointed with us and they've just binned the contract with us. Um, yeah, those contracts have, have have vanished. They've just gone. But we, we had a contract with you to, to service planes and do stuff. Oh, OK. Right, that's somewhat unexpected. Um, right, well, we need to get some more of these guys in. Let's have... I mean, these need fuel, outbound passengers, outbound luggage, and they have after-flight check service. So that's what that little place does. That's what that little sort of uh, hangar type thing does that we put in not too long ago. Let's get one of these in. Let's get one of those in. So just the three... Yeah, so five flights coming in across three days. That'll do. We'll have that, please. And that can bring in some money. I don't know what happened to those other ones. That's all a little bit strange. Right, so this one's going to arrive today. So let's put that at, well, let's put one, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's put this as, just do it normally. And then they can arrive the next day if they want to. So we'll put that one there and that one there and that one. That's going to arrive today. And they'll put that one there 
and now we can start moving them around between the ramps or do we even want to do that i'm sure looking back on this i'm sure i'll look back in the editing or whatever and go ah that's what i did wrong but right now i can't see why those things disappeared maybe just those contracts expired but we had four days on those remaining they were paying quite nice amounts of money for, for those flights coming through which is a bit of a shame okay confirm those changes so they're now locked in that's absolutely fine so these things are going to happen for three days however we do then need to think about what we're doing with number one or do we hang on hang on let's just move them up there move them up hang on boop like that put that like that and that like that and then confirm those changes and switch that back to anyone can come and land on this and we'll just have those on the you know, ramp one for now so now ramp two is open for people to come in and just, you know, anybody that needs to fly by and get some stuff, you're absolutely welcome. Come on in. There is a very unfortunate lull in proceedings right now. So much so that the green kind of fast forward time button has appeared. Oh my goodness me. Come on, everybody. Come in. Come and give us all your money, please. Because we're paying out quite a lot of money in loans and other bits and bobs. Right. Paper trays is done. I mean, I don't know if that's exciting or not. Yay for paper trays. Did we really have to invent paper trays? <laughs> Is that something we had to actually work out how to do? What does flight management do? Increases the limit of to be scheduled flights for scheduling. Have 10 flights to be scheduled at the same time. Could we not do that before? We had more than more than that done before, didn't we? Um, okay, let's keep going down these here. Let's keep going down here. Let's go for contract negotiating. Yeah, we'll go for that, please. Again, we're just kind of completing things that are now behind the red line of progress. Uh, okay, so come out of that. That's all very good. We're working on that. Yeah, we're not getting many planes coming in. We're not getting much coming in at all. And yeah, we're paying out loads in maintenance and stuff and all these things. And look, these three are empty. These three things are in. There's four empty now. Can we just get more coming in, please? More stuff coming in, which makes me think we should just switch this back onto a scheduled flight. And at least maybe we have three lots of scheduled flights. Oh, we can't have that though, can we? We can't have three lots of scheduled flights. Can we take out another contract then? Take out another contract similar to this one here. In fact, it's pretty much exactly the same. So what if we take out, take that contract out to so say, sign that. Okay, lovely. Go back into our scheduling window, switch that back on to scheduled flights and then drop these in. But can we stagger them ever so slightly? I don't think we're able to stagger them too much, are we? We can't do too much with these. That goes there. That's going to go there. But then, yes, there's not going to be... That last one is going to be a little bit... It's going to be a little bit close. But, okay, we'll accept that. That's a lot of money coming in per day. That's a lot of money that we really need because, look, there's just nothing happening. There's no planes coming in. Come and use up our lovely cargo and fuel. It's really, really nice. Okay, things picking up again a little bit, which is very encouraging. And there was one of our scheduled flights coming in. So one of the Royal Aviation Company folks. So they pay quite a lot of money, but still, it's not enough. We do not have enough money coming in to you know, cope with everything. We're going to run out of fuel at some point. We're going to run out of uh, money to pay off the loans and all that kind of stuff. So we just need more flights coming in, please. I mean, I'm very tempted to switch over another, another ramp to scheduled flights and take out another contract. Because as long as they keep coming in, anyway, we're okay at sorting them out. We kind of can make quite a bit of money off those contracts. And they're a nice consistent sort of source of income. Like these are a bit hit and miss. You know, sometimes we get loads of these things coming in. And sometimes we don't see any of the sort of, you know, as you are sort of flights coming in. The ones which just sort of say, I'm coming to land, let me in kind of things. So yeah, we don't see any of those for a long time. So scheduled flights are... Yeah, a nice constant source of income. Contract negotiating is in, which is quite good. I think flight management might be quite a good thing to get. Increase unscheduled flight number. What does that what does that mean though? What does it mean? I'm gonna press research and we'll just get that done and see what happens. Also, yes, can we can this be boosted now then? How do we boost this? I'm very confused with how we boost things. I'm a bit baffled as to the whole boosting thing because this here, paper trays, is a workflow boost which would imply that we can boost the workflow of what though research i mean if we could boost research i'd like to get that done but again i don't know how to do all these kind of things there doesn't seem to be a sort of a place where we can go and press boost research it just isn't here what does that little cog thing do in the corner i mean what that does i'd like to i'd like to boost the office please can we make the office just do things a bit quicker because you know research is good 
Okay, I've gone through and looked at lots of different screens. I've pressed lots of different buttons. I do not know how these things are deployed. I don't know where that is. Workflow boost, but what workflow? Workflow generically for anything. So just any old workflow that's just given us more workflow points. But then we don't seem to have anything that uses workflow. We don't seem to have much that kind of deploys that. So if people know how to do this kind of stuff, if people know how this kind of stuff works, please let me know in the comments because I will admit to being a little bit befuddled by this kind of stuff. I'm a little bit lost with all these workflow points things. Like I'd love to get the passenger boost thing in, but I do not know how. I don't know how that works at all. So, so do you know what? It's fine. I'm sure we'll, I'm sure we'll muddle through and find it at some point. But yes, if you could let me know in the comments, that would be very handy. Okay, we're gonna have to buy some more fuel. This is not looking good, is it? This is not looking good at all. Let's buy three thousand units of fuel for over half of our money. But we're going to need it. We're gonna absolutely need that because, uh, because yes, we're running out of fuel again. Oh, but this is interesting. That's interesting. There is a renegotiate button now over here near the contracts that we've signed. Because we've got ourselves our contract negotiation thing unlocked, we can now go and maybe get some more money from these particular flights. Okay. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, this is horribly complicated. What is going on here? Um, okay, we can see what's going on with all the different flights and things. But how, how do we make more money out of this? I want to charge more money, please. Landing income is 11. Services income is 519. So we make 530 from that. Hang on, that's not right. The average income is 700, it says there. Penalty, come down. Changing the turnaround time will unschedule the flight. Am I changing the turnaround time? I was changing the penalty price. Oh, this is horribly complicated. Hang on a minute, hang on. Turnaround time goes up. Okay, those things seem to be protected somehow. So yeah, these are the services that it requires. I was hoping to just get more money out of it, to be honest. I was hoping to make more cash out of this to charge a little bit more rather than switch these things on and off which we can't seem to do anyway um okay right don't fully understand that don't really know what's going on there we'll just pretend that never happened because it seems complicated and horrid okay so we've made it through to the end of another day it's currently about 20 past eight at night in the year 1931 we've got about two and a half thousand dollars so that's okay. That's actually a little bit more than I was expecting to have because we had to go and grab some more fuel and what have you. So that's okay. Now that will dwindle overnight because we're paying the staff wages and we've got to stock up on the sort of cargo stuff and all that kind of stuff. So that'll come down a little bit. There we go. You can see it happening right now. But we are doing some research stuff, which is quite handy. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens with this now. Now I'm a bit confused about that contract thing. I was hoping to renegotiate the contract to make it just better for us, but... We didn't seem to be able to change it to do anything. Maybe the big thing about that is when you accept the contract. Maybe you can have a little bit more control on that. Um, yeah, that's that's not looking good, is it? Those numbers don't look particularly brilliant there. That's that's not encouraging. We're, we're not making much money anymore. Do you know, looking at this, even if we didn't have to pay out our loan monies there of about two and a half grand every day, we still would not be making enough money. We'd still be losing money. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. Okay, so we're paying a bit in fuel. That's fine. We kind of have to do that and getting the cargo back in. So that's a kind of, you know, that's a necessary expense. Staff, okay, we're paying quite a lot on staff. Maybe we don't need the research stuff quite as quickly. Maybe we should drop our staff numbers and save a little bit of money on there. Roads, we're spending quite a lot of money on roads, which does make me worry a little bit that we've built our airport way too big and we're just wasting so much money on loads of roads. I mean, this road here, is quite long and there's not much on this road. So maybe really we should have built everything a lot closer. But of course, you know, first time we're playing it, I didn't really know that at the time. Taxiway, yeah, that's a little bit, it's a little bit costly. Buildings, okay, grand on buildings alone. Boost 240, that's okay. Vehicles, vehicle maintenance is a grand. Terminal objects, don't really know what that is, but okay, and loans and then only $2 of penalties this time around. But yeah, that's not looking great, is it? That's not looking brilliant. And there goes another 560. Do you know what I think we might do? I think we might drop the number of people that we're employing here. Let's drop that down to two people. So we're generating a lot less workflow points. So we're getting a lot less research, but we are saving ourselves some money right now. And that's what we desperately, desperately need to do. We do not have enough money to kind of, you know, keep everything ticking over. So you know what? Yes, we'll, we'll drop the amount of staff we've got right now. Apologies, staff people. Very sorry. I'm very sorry. Uh, stick around. Stick around. We'll probably get you back in a bit because you're really good at your job and you were amazing. Just, you know, hard times and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, but yeah, we'll see what we can do. Hopefully, 
Hopefully that will save us a little bit of money. Research will come down in speed a tiny bit, but you know what? That's okay. And that looks much better. $54 in staff every time it ticks around rather than 150 something. So we are saving quite a chunk of money there. Okay, so we have researched flight management. So now we can have ourselves 10 flights to be scheduled at the same time. Okay, that's, that's good. Increases the unscheduled flights number. Does that mean we can have 10 flights at the bottom of this screen here? Is that what that means? Yeah, we can now have 10. Oh, okay. I didn't really realize that that was a thing that we had to pay attention to, but right you are. So that's a thing. Okay. Um, okay, so that's good. We've got that in. Now, what do we want to get now? I think those two we don't particularly need right now. Although flexible contracts of fuel would be quite nice if we get them a bit cheaper, but I bet we're lagging behind in other things. Technical standards of roads don't really care unless it's about maintenance on roads, in which case that would be fine. But no, unfortunately, that's not that. Um, personnel, yeah, we're lagging behind in that as well. Passenger services, yes, we're lagging behind in that. And then airplane services, oh, we're behind in that as well. Okay, wonderful stuff. Okay, this is all going fine. Right, passenger services, advanced terminal. Let's get that done. And now everything's really slow. 15 hours. But okay, that's fine. 15 hours it is to get a fancy new advanced terminal that, in all honesty, we're not going to be able to afford to build. But you know, at least we'll know what it looks like. We can draw it. We can you know, draw some plans up of what it might look like. We just might never actually be able to build it. Okay, so the day has started. We have $510 and we have hardly any fuel. But we are dealing with our scheduled flights here. So they should pay out quite a nice amount of money. However, we've already ran out of fuel and the day is very young. Okay, this is becoming a little bit of a problem, isn't it? Right, so get some fuel, 1,260. 3,000 units of fuel we can afford. That will keep us going for a little while. However, now our money is looking quite tragically terrible indeed. But there we go, at least these are now being refueled. How is that going? You're waiting for baggage. That's looking very good. Oh, look at that. And now it's just the parking service thing that's happening there. Okay. Well, that's pretty quick. I mean, okay, now we have no money at all, but things are looking very nice indeed. Yeah, look at this. Things are ticking over quite well. You're willing to pay quite a lot of money. That's quite good. Yeah, you come in. In fact, you know what? Get everybody in. They require some fuel, but that means we can you know, buy more fuel. We just want more people coming in. They pay landing fees and all that kind of stuff. And there we go. So those two flights have come in and now gone out. So those first two scheduled flights are now done, which is wonderful. So there we go. So now we're working our way toward the next ones, which are slightly staggered, which is very helpful. Um, you just want some, you just want some cargo. Absolutely. Come on in. Take all of our cargo away from us. You want an awful lot of fuel. No, not you. Go and find another airfield. I don't mind giving people a little bit of fuel, but 875, that's quite the sizable chunk of fuel they were demanding. And of course, we've got to make sure that we have fuel for our lovely sort of scheduled flights that we've signed contracts for. So yeah, we need to make sure that's all fine. Right. Okay. We're on minus seven. Oh, no, no. Right. The money's ticking up quite nicely. Okay. That's good. I'm just looking at our fuel. It's, it's looking low again. Oh, this is, this is perfect. That's that. Yes, we'll have you come in and you as well. Yes, please. Just have all of the cargo. Take all of the cargo away from us because we don't need it. We don't really want it. You might as well take it off our hands and you're willing to pay us some money to do so. So that's wonderful. We won't have you. Just more cargo flights. More cargo flights. And we are going to need some more fuel. Of course we are. If we could get a load of money in very soon, that would be handy. That doesn't help, game. That doesn't help. Taking away all the money doesn't help bringing all the money in, does it, game? Ah, some new contracts have been unlocked for the Royal Aviation Company. Ah, is that worth going to have a look at? So we've already got the contract with them. I mean, do we want to sign another contract with another company? Surely we're allowed to do that. We can go and sign a contract with aircraft transport and travel because this is passengers. Why don't we go and get somebody that can, that can move cargo? Because we always have a lot of cargo left over. Why don't we go and do that? Who would like to move some cargo, please? Pan Am. It's a real airline, isn't it? Aren't they real? I don't think they exist now. I'm not entirely sure. I'm fairly sure that's a real thing. Um, I mean, the Royal Postmaster's Office. Airline window. Grown out of the Royal Courier Service, now it is a worldwide delivery company. It doesn't have its own home airport and requires a lot of services. A fleet mainly consists of small airplanes. But you're not doing passengers, are you? You're not moving passengers around. You just want to get, you just want to get goods moved because you're the postmaster's office. So I imagine they're just going to move stuff about. Okay, like, yeah, uh, what's that? Orville Air Cargo. 
you're just going to be moving uh, cargo around as well. So yeah, a small company established by two brothers, aviation pioneers, <laughs> that would make sense, operates cargo flights. Okay, how about we have that then? So yeah, we'll sign a contract with Orville Air Cargo. Okay, they sound good. We get 500 for signing that. Okay, however, these ratings of these guys, ah, because they're international. They're going to be moving people about. So we've already got one sort of contract that moves people about. So yeah, let's get one of these. Though. I mean, aircraft, transport and travel. I imagine these are all more or less the same, but these require slightly... Yeah, we've not got quite as big planes coming in with those, which could be quite handy. Um, I mean, I quite like the Royal Postmaster's Office. We've had lots of those planes coming in, and I like the fact that we've got Royal Link. So the Royal Aviation Company and the Royal Postmaster's Office, because, you know, it makes us feel far more important than we are. So we'll sign that for 500 money, which is very nice indeed. And then... What's this requiring? Fuel and cargo. However, I notice these are just requiring cargo. Okay, this is very good indeed. So yeah, if we sign a contract, so five planes over three days, and they're paying a little bit of money each day. Yeah, we'll have that, please. We'll just say yes, absolutely. Ah, right, here we go. Here comes this complicated thing. So turnaround time, one hour 45. Ah, okay. Okay, so the turnaround time is less, but then the penalty... So the turnaround time is longer, but the penalty is less. Okay, can we not... I want to up the money. I want to up the money we get from this. And do we have to do that for each individual flight? Or can we say the turnaround time is 1 hour 45 for all of these flights? Okay, that's a bit better. So how about that? Turnaround time of 1 hour 45 and our penalty comes down. So we'll sign that, please. All they need is outbound cargo. We should be able to cope with that. So sign that. Okay. And now I think we need to turn this one here. So ramp number three into Royal Postmaster stuff. So there we go. This is probably causing us all sorts of horrible technical problems <laughs> because of all the different sort of overlapping things. But okay. Oh, hang on. Oh, no. Okay. No, they're, they're bigger. The slots of those are a lot bigger. Ah, is that, is that what we just... Ah, that might have been what we just negotiated. Okay, yeah, they have a slightly bigger turnaround time. Ah, okay. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. A lesson has been learned, but I think we'll be okay. We're okay with that sort of stuff. So confirm that. So we should see... Yeah, we should see stuff coming in for that soon. And again, that's a good thing. That's another good thing. That's more sort of money coming in, more consistent income, as long as we can, you know, keep it going and service the planes and all that kind of stuff. And we've just managed to get $2,204 and we're going to have to immediately spend 2,100 of it on 5,000 units of fuel. So there we go. Farewell, lovely amount of money that we did once have because we have no fuel at all which is not a good thing when you've got people that need refueling. So uh, so yes, we'll try and get that all sorted. Look at that though. That is lovely money coming in. Ah, and then the game is very cruel and it takes it all away again. Damn you game. Okay, here we go. This is our first Royal Postmaster scheduled flight coming in. So it's looking pretty good. They're just chucking all the stuff straight on board. So they've unloaded some of the cargo and now they're going to load some more cargo back onto it. Meanwhile, this flight is coming as well and that one's coming in. Oh, look at all the scheduled flights we've got going on. This is brilliant. Okay, this is our first Royal Postmaster's Office flight. So it's looking pretty good. They've got the cargo off of it and then reloaded it with some more cargo and the parking service is happening. That's very good. That's actually gone quite nicely indeed. And we've got the other two flights in as well. So our other two scheduled flights are in. This is very encouraging. This is looking good. And we have completed research on the advanced terminal that we have no chance to ever build. Splendid. Okay, this could be quite good. This has a slightly obscure kind of benefit to it. So the personnel rest facilities research means that we let our people go and have a little bit of a lie down. We let them go and have a snooze and all that kind of stuff. There we go. We can see the Zeds coming out. So this person's having a rest. And because they've had a rest, it makes them more productive due to them not being overworked. And it means we get a luggage transfer boost, which... I mean, okay, that sounds quite good. It sounds like a good thing. It seems a bit strange, but okay, we'll take that. I mean, the research is super slow now. That's going to take 14 hours. So that will be done at some point in the middle of the night, but we might as well get that in. I mean, again, don't quite know how to deploy the luggage transfer boost unless it just happens. Unless it just happens because we have researched it. 
just because you know it's there we know about it it then just sort of applies itself you know by default or whatever i do not know but um yeah there we go we'll get that done i mean things are looking okay things are looking okay we've still got these flights coming through they're taking a long time to do the um the parking service thing on this they're taking a little while to get that done but that's fine that's fine we're in no rush for that and these two also look like it's the parking service that they're waiting for so they've got their passengers and all that kind of stuff oh look at that oh look at that they're all in they're all in perfect sort of synchronization okay that's good so there we go and the money we got from them has completely vanished instantly and we're in debt yay yay for having no money okay and there goes the final plane of the day and we now have 432 dollars it's not going entirely according to plan, is it? I think we might need to remove some things. I mean, the wooden air traffic control tower, does that do anything? Do we need that around? It gives the boost to whatever this thing is just here, but I don't really know what that is. I don't know what that is. Number of operations allowed per one takeoff landing time slot. But I don't know if we're making use of that or not. And we're paying maintenance on it. So if we don't need it, we could always get rid of it to save us a tiny, tiny bit of money. But again, I don't think it's really going to help too much. I don't think that's going to be... Yeah, that's not going to solve all our financial woes. We just need more flights. We need more flights coming in. We just don't have enough flights, particularly cargo flights. We just don't have enough of those. Unless we sign another contract with with the postmaster people and turn this ramp here so ramp number four into a scheduled ramp and that one can also be for the postal people maybe we need to do that maybe that's exactly what we need to do yeah i mean again look we've spent what did we get we got about yeah nine and a half grand on actual sort of you know, dealing with the airplanes and then 800 from signing a contract which is very nice so 10 grand in total which is okay and then yes we spent 12 grand with a balance of 162, which is not particularly brilliant, is it there? So only 10 in penalties, that's okay. I mean, yeah, vehicles, we're spending a lot on vehicles. And roads, we're spending four grand on roads every day. It's so expensive. Like, almost half of our sort of airplane fees that we're charging are going on roads, which that just sounds a little bit silly there, to be honest, but okay. Right, new contracts are available. Let's go and see if any of these contracts are actually any good. Um... Oh, yeah, hang on, hang on. Pause a second. Pause, pause, pause. They look quite good. What's that? Five flights over seven or eight days, and they require outbound cargo and fuel. But that's fine. That's fine. We can cope with that. And for that, they're willing to pay 535 average income. The penalty, however, is 600 if we boot them out. We can do that, can't we? We could do that. We could get another one of our another one of our ramp scheduled for fancy sort of scheduled flights and have a go at one of these. Because we're losing money anyway, so we might as well at least try something revolutionary to get more money in. Um let's go for the one on seven cycles, just in case this really doesn't work. I mean that's that's that ramp tied up for seven days. It's quite a long time. But it, yeah, it moves our cargo out, and we've got loads of that cargo. So yeah, okay, do you know what? Let's sign that um hang on bring that round bring that to there so hopefully that sort of shrinks down the sort of window that we've got to slot into our schedule right sign that please this is probably terrible there we go well, we've got some money for it hooray we're not quite as horrendously poor um and then that's now going to be for scheduled flights and then we just need to drop them in out of the flight min max start time interval what what does that mean what Hang on, we have to put them in between certain hours? Oh. Oh, hang on a second. <laughs> hang on a second. Can we go and renegotiate that contract, please? I didn't notice there was some sort of time frame thing for that. Between 11 and 3... Oh, botherations. Okay. Okay, this is... <laughs> this is going to be a bit of an issue, isn't it? Um, right, we need to reschedule loads of stuff around. You guys come here. That's the earliest that can go. Bring that that way. Right, that's going to have to slot into that gap there. This is going to go here. That's going to go... That can't go just there. Okay. <laughs> oh, this this is all, it's all good. Right, hang on. Drag one of you guys down to here. That's fine. And then that means we can put that one into that gap. Just let's stagger it a bit there. This is how a professional sort of, uh, yeah, sort of airline planner person would, would do all this stuff. It's absolutely fine. And then we need one more slot in the middle. 
but we can't. Oh no, no, that's one of those. That's one of those. Yeah, I didn't realise there were times. I didn't realise there were times with this sort of thing. Um, right. We do have ourselves a bit of a technical issue here. Hang on, I'm, we can do this. We can absolutely sort this. It'll all be fine. Okay, if we bunch those three up there, that means that we can reschedule that flight at the top right down to here and then drag that one in to the top just there. I mean, it looks busy. Uh, it'll be fine. It'll all go through absolutely swimmingly. Nobody will notice that that is an absolute complete disaster waiting to happen. Let's just see, shall we? Let's get through to the next day and let us just watch the carnage unfold. Okay, so it is seven o'clock in the morning and we are $1,000 down already, which is brilliant. We do have two things looking like the, the ramps have sprung into life, which is good. So that's good. Oh, three. Three now. You want some cargo. You can come in. Absolutely. Welcome aboard. You want fuel? Not, not so keen on the fuel people nowadays. We want to keep the fuel for our sort of, you know, our scheduled flights and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, anybody that wants, I mean, that's very tempting because they pay quite a lot of money, but I don't want to have our scheduled flights run out of fuel. So we'll just take people that want cargo, please. And then here we go. These guys are coming in. They're getting loaded up with cargo. They're just doing the sort of the flight check things. Those guys have gone out already, which is very good. So yeah, what's going on here then? Are you the postmaster things? Yeah, it's just the parking service. And you're just parking service. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. Right, personal rest facilities. Uh, we'll have aircraft fueling instructions. They can you know, fuel the planes a bit quicker. Can we work out where that is? Where is the luggage transfer boost? Or is it just automatically switched on? Who knows? Oh yes, and we've got two big planes coming in that just require lots of cargo services. There's another one there as well. Right, get rid of the fuel ones. We're just now having cargo planes coming in as the sort of the extra planes. Maybe occasionally if we've got a little bit of fuel spare, we might take some of the fuel sort of requiring planes on board. But yeah, like you, that's 875 fuel. We need all the fuel for our fancy scheduled planes. So yes, if we could load the cargo up onto these guys, that'd be good, because this guy's gonna go. I think we're gonna run out of time. Hang on, hang on, hang on, and boom. Yes, in you come. I think we just caught that person just in time. There's another one here that wants to get, get six bits of cargo. That's very good. Yep, yeah, hang on, you both, you're both paying the same. Yeah, so you can come in, absolutely. Okay, this is all going very well. There's no thing saying, you know, the planes are late or whatever. Okay. Are we beginning to turn this around a little bit? Is this what we should be doing? Is this what we should be doing? Getting lots of scheduled flights in rather than relying on the so little, you know, sort of ad hoc kind of flights. Is that what should be happening? Oh my goodness me. That plane needs 1,312 bits of fuel and it wants to take away 21 cargo, but it's willing to pay $1,674 to do so. Um... I mean, we don't have that much fuel on board right now. I think that might possibly cause us more trouble than it's worth. Although it does sound really tempting. But okay, okay, so the money is the money's coming in. The money is coming in. Oh my goodness me, are we getting these things in now? Is this the latest new shiny technology? A Boeing. Oh, it's a Boeing plane. Okay, that's exciting. I've heard of those. It's a plane that I know about. I've heard the name. Okay, fine. Um, Right, so yeah. These are coming in. Money is ticking up quite nicely. Fuel is now entirely not there, however. Right, let's go and grab some fuel for an amount of money that we can afford. And there we go. And all of our good money has now entirely vanished again. Yeah, now the money for the loans has just gone out. For some reason, it must go out at about midday or something. But yeah, it looks really good. Then all of a sudden, your money just sort of tumbles down because we are paying out quite a lot of money in bank loans. So yeah, we need lots of these flights to keep coming through. I mean, these ones are, look at that. The money is coming in quite nicely from those. From all of those, it's ticking over quite nicely. The maintenance brings it right back down again. Won't mind some more of these, actually. Can we get some more of the, the sort of unscheduled ad hoc flights, please, game? Oh, no. I've had to pay out another 1250 in loan. So we're now catastrophically poor with nothing much going on. No kind of ad hoc flights coming in at all. Just nobody's requesting them, which is all very unfortunate. Our fuel is completely tumbling. In fact, our fuel is, our fuel is non-existent. We have no fuel at all. Okay, and our money is continuing to tumble. Yeah, I don't see how this is going to work. I imagine we cannot just sign a thing to get loads of fuel because, oh, we can. Hang on a minute, but we haven't got any money. Hang on, that doesn't make any sense. How are we paying for the fuel? How are we paying for the fuel when we had entirely no money whatsoever? Oh, I didn't realize we could spend money when we had minus money. I thought that would have just said, no, get out of here. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Well, that, that changes everything. <laughs> that changes everything. Okay, now we've got a massive load of fuel. 
but it should keep things ticking over for quite some time. Uh, and then all this stuff can just keep sort of rolling through. Okay, right, I didn't realise that was a thing. I did not realise that was a thing that we could do. Yeah, we'll have you in, please, if we've got a slot for you, because you just want some cargo stuff. Nice, easy money right there. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. Um, okay, right, let's get through to let's get through to the end of today. Let's get through to the end of the day and just see what we look like in terms of our money and fuel and stock and everything else. Okay, so it's eight o'clock at night. All of the planes have cleared out of the airport, so everything is now completely shut down, and we find ourselves with minus $1,144. That's not very good, is it? At the end of a day of trading, that is, that's quite bad indeed. That is quite bad indeed. Let's get through to the end of the day and just see what it says about our, um, oh, we've, we've done some research at least. Yay for the research. So yes, we've got aircraft fueling kind of stuff. So fueling boosts are now better. I think that's what that means. What's boarding assistance? Electrified machines. Okay, ramp service speed up. Well, that could be quite useful. That's going to take 20 hours. Okay, that's going to take quite a long time, but we'll get that. Um, yeah, let's just move time on. And let's just see what happens at the end of the day. When we get out... Oh, crikey, yes. They've got to get the, we've got to spend some more money on getting some more cargo in. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's fine. Who needs the money anyway? We can go into minus numbers and it all seems absolutely fine. So yeah, let's just get, get the little sort of cargo truck to deliver stuff. But I want to look at today's money. There we go. So we made 13,219 actually sort of airplane handling, which is pretty good. That's quite good. Um, 300 from signing a contract, that's okay. But still, we're spending loads on so many other things. And yeah, I mean, the fact that we're spending two and a half grand on loans does not help. That doesn't help matters. But yes, we would have gone way under, I think, had we not got those loans. But then, can we just pay one of the loans back? I know we haven't got the money, but could we just say, hang on a minute. Yeah, there you go. Right, there's that thing. Our cargo is now topped up. We have even less money than we did before. But I mean, this here, 9,840 remaining to pay. Can we just accept that? Yes, we can. We can just go into really catastrophically low amounts of money. Okay, but then at what point does the game say you are bankrupt? Or does it not? I've got no idea. I do not know. I mean, that's at least saved us paying out 1,250 per day or whatever. I mean, do we just pay that one off as well? And just dip down into the <laughs> some tragically low numbers there? Because it doesn't seem to matter. Um, yes. Okay, we now don't have any loans taken out. We do find ourselves $21,760 down, but at least we're now not paying out two and a half grand every day to, to get you know, loans sorted. And we can still buy things, as we've seen. We can still get fuel. Okay, I'm a bit confused about that. I'm a little bit confused. Um, right, let's go through to the next morning. Let's go through to the morning of whatever year it is, 1935 or thereabouts. Okay, so a new day rolls around and we are now almost minus $23,000 in debt. So what we'll do is we will finish up for the moment and we will come back next time. I mean, we could just easily just sort of bail out of this and go, do you know what? I think it's over. I think 23 grand down is a little bit, it's a little bit of a, uh, a big leap to try and get that back. But I think we might be able to pull it off. We might be able to do it if we can get perhaps another ramp here turn another ramp into a ramp for scheduled flights and get some more scheduled flights in, maybe moving cargo about. Because that seems to be quite good. It's quite easy for us to do. We get loads of cargo in every day anyway, so we might as well make the most of it because we're paying some money for it. So we might have a look at doing that and uh, we'll just try and salvage this. But I don't know at what point the game is going to go, no, you are rubbish. You don't know what you're doing. Get out of here. You're fired. I expect it's imminent if i'm honest i mean you know most games would not have let us get this far but uh but yeah we'll keep trying we'll keep trying next time we'll see what happens we'll see how we get on and we'll give it we'll give it a jolly good shot if it doesn't work never mind you know what at least we've tried at least we've tried to run an airfield i mean yeah maybe it won't work who knows we will find out next time out hopefully you are still enjoying this if you are then please do leave a like that would be most splendid indeed and also if you're not already then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in skyhaven but for now thank you very much for joining me in the geek cupboard and i will see you next time let's throw that at you that might get you that's a beautiful shot oh, that's all, but this is an unpleasant angle trish can you just fall in the water please this is this is this is the best box. This is my favourite box of the game so far. Oh no 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 no! It, it is hurting me. It's hurting me a lot. Very uh, interesting way of doing your medical examinations. Who's examining who?